Welcome back to Virtual Vikings Game Plan. I'm Paul Allen. Let's chat some more Vikings football. Here's Gabe Henderson. ESPN's Courtney Cronin joins me today. And Courtney, the Vikings are looking to play a Houston Texans team this weekend. But before we get there, there was a recent scare this week on Tuesday, similar to yourself, went in for a COVID test to come out to see players going to their cars, leaving the facility. For you, what was your initial reaction? I mean, frankly, I thought, okay, we made it through three weeks unscathed. This was going to happen at some point. I think everybody across the league knew that there was going to be some situation um, that would pop up one way or the other. It certainly is a little jarring when it's the team that you cover, um, being, you know, the, the, the spotlight of them spotlight of the NFL was on the Vikings and the Titans uh, on Tuesday. And, and like you said, I was in the testing trailer before 9 a.m. on Tuesday morning and then come to find out that TCO Performance Center is, you know, evacuating and shutting down shortly before 10 a.m. is kind of a scary situation because you just don't know. Like we talk about the incubation period and, yeah, they didn't have tests that showed up positive, but will they? Um, Honestly, I think the team's response out of the abundance of caution, the Vikings could not have handled this better. They're not the ones who put themselves in this situation. I think truly from what we've seen, it is a little bit of a negligent act. People I've spoken with um, from the Vikings organization are not exactly thrilled that the Titans still traveled in spite of everything that went on. But we're here now. We can't redo the past. Uh, I think going forward, you know, you're starting to see heavily, more heavily worded language from the NFL, uh, just in terms of what the penalties and, and what the uh, ramifications are going to be if people don't take all of the protocols and precautions safely. Um, but what we've seen the Vikings do, I mean, they've been, you know, in a great spot uh, and they haven't been the problem here. So you, you hope for the sake of this team and being able to carry out the season that this is just a blip on the radar and not something that's going to cause teams to have to miss games or shut down for a couple weeks. Well, the goal and the plan is for the Vikings to travel to Houston this weekend to face the Texans. And speaking of the Texans that are 0-3 right now, similar to the Vikings, what stands out to you about this game? I mean, it's dire time for both teams to be able to bounce back and, and win a game. And you saw how close the Vikings were last week against Tennessee and that it was it came down to can you get your team in the field goal range um and they couldn't I mean the, the the Houston Texans too were up on the Steelers big at one point and they gave that game away somebody's going to be 0-4 after the first quarter of the season and that is a tough hole to climb out from so I think the sense of urgency is going to be there for both teams um and and you know just playing it locally here in Minnesota they were really close to winning a game and the difference between one and two and oh and three is very big um and so is the difference between one and three and oh and four for sure and we know Deshaun Watson not off to you know the best start of his career for touch four touchdowns three interceptions so how can this Vikings pass offense uh try to try to take advantage of that with him not being the Deshaun Watson we're used to yeah, I think you could potentially get into a shootout here. Um, Deshaun's one of those players who he extends drives, he improvises, he doesn't need a solid offensive line. It would be nice that he's not on his back all the time getting sacked, but um, he's not somebody who lives and dies with the play that's around him. He can make a lot of things happen on his own, but can you overcome all of the hurdles with your offense and all of that throughout three weeks? No, he can't. So, you know, for Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense, run it back to what you did last week outside of that last drive. I mean, they looked pretty good. I mean, yes, Kirk was pressured the third highest rate of his career, which is certainly an issue, but I think that Jefferson arrived. Like, he certainly arrived. Like, the, the training wheels are off. You're not going to see him, like, go back. And while seven catches, 175 yards might not be the every week performance, you know you have a dynamic playmaker. And it shows you how different this offense can be when it has legitimate one and two options at the wide receiver position. And on top of that, Dalvin Cook had a terrific day. So all of the pieces are there. Lastly, keys to success for a Vikings win on Sunday. I think establish the run with Dalvin Cook early. Houston has not been great in defending uh, dynamic backs like that. We saw it the first week with Clyde Edwards-Alaire in, in Kansas City. Um, and obviously last week, too, in Pittsburgh. I think that was certainly something that uh, stood out to me you know, watching back that game. But, you know, beyond that, um, do what you do best, yeah. which is, you know, Kirk Cousin looks really good spreading the ball around. Don't put yourself in a situation um, where you're just targeting Adam Thielen. Like, he looked really good in getting other guys involved, 
when he's when he's under center and he's rolling out and he's throwing that touchdown to Adam Thielen, like that's the Kirk of old that we're used to seeing. Um, so a lot of that comes down to the game plan, what's scripted for him. See big days from guys like Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson yet again. And I think on defense, I mean, Mike Zimmer has, you know, candidly admitted it's a work in progress. Um, and they have, you know, in his eyes, his, his DBs have shown improvement throughout the first few weeks. Maybe if you get a Mike Hughes or a Cam Dantzler back this week, that that could help that unit for sure. Um, but you're still going to be dealing with lumps. I mean, we don't expect to Neil Hunter back anytime soon. Anthony Barr is out for the season. Um, I think it's kind of learning how to deal with those losses, which might actually take a couple of weeks. Yeah. But if you do see improvement, you're trending in the right direction, that maybe maybe you can steal one on the road here and kind of get some morale and momentum going back at home. Thank you, Courtney.